So we recently got back from a trip, and while we were there, we had filled up with fuel. When we got home, noticed a little bit of blue coloration in a spot where I wasn't expecting it. Blue is bad. Blue is the sign of fuel. And so optimistically thought, maybe it's just a little bit of remnants of the filling up of the fuel that we did uh, on our trip. And so wiped it off, let it sit overnight, came back and found the blue color again, even worse than we had found it the first day. Yeah, like the leak had gotten worse or it just had been longer and so more had leaked out. So we had a fuel leak. What were your thoughts when I told you I think we had a fuel leak? Thumbs down. Thumbs down. <laughs> And that's because this isn't our first fuel leak. We built an RV8 a couple of years ago and uh, have had no fuel leaks uh, in that plane. Building RV10, I would have expected to be even more prudent in my design choices and practical with my knowledge. And yet, both fuel tanks on the RV-10, each one had a leak, uh, what we found when the tanks were actually put on the first time and filled with fuel. And so one tank we had to take off uh, to fix, the other tank we were able to fix on the plane, but uh, didn't do as good of a job on these tanks, apparently. Flash forward to December 2022, about 100 hours in on the aircraft, and we developed another fuel leak on the outboardmost side of the tank, the left tank. And so we had to take the fuel tank off. And that was a bigger deal because the plane had just been painted or had already been painted. Right, yeah, the first time the fuel leak, we, Kayla found the fuel leak, it was unpainted. So super easy to just take the fuel tanks off. But uh, in December, um, it was a bigger, like it was not, I would call it, what I, I would call a big leak, but it was definitely enough that we needed to take we needed to fix it. Um, and so the big thing was just, you know, getting the actual tank off. So the, since the pane had been painted, um, they actually had painted over the screws, the screws on the fuel tank. And so we had to very carefully loosen every single screw um, to prevent you know, just big flakes of paint just coming off. Um, so it was a little more time intensive because it was the first time off and um, it, I, I think in pre, the previous annual I had helped some but I was definitely more involved in 2022 um, and so just doing that again after kind of tearing the plane apart for the condition inspection a year ago, uh, even the year before, was just a little slower going. Um, and there was definitely, especially where the wing, wing walk was, it was definitely very hard to get those screws off. Yeah. So uh, when we did that fuel tank removal in December of 2022 and got everything back together, you said a comment. I think my exact words are, if I ever have to do this ever again, I'm selling this plane. Yeah. It's not the most fun thing to take the fuel tank off. So faced with the prospect of doing it uh, spring of 2023, early summer 2023, not the most exciting news to have to deal with. It right? was definitely not exciting, but I will say it went a lot quicker. Um, I think part of the problem with the in December was we were doing a condition ex inspection. And so there were lots of other things going on with the plane. And so I think the overall process just took longer. Yeah. Um, but also you know when it's dark at five o'clock and you're working in a, a hangar that's 50 degrees it's just maybe not as much fun i mean this time we had the doors open and you know it was pretty out i think just doing it again you know five months before it was I fresh in our just, minds for sure it, it definitely process. yeah it definitely went much quicker and it was not nearly as daunting as i was expecting <laughs>
notice evidence of a leak, uh, in this case on the inboard most side of the tank, basically up near the side of the fuselage. Now, these leaks can actually be a little deceiving because the fuel follows gravity. And right. so where you end up seeing the fuel is not necessarily where the leak actually is occurring. And this begins the process of trying to figure out exactly where the leak is. So we looked at it and had a pretty good idea at the top, uh, right around the tank attach bracket, um, which is the forwardmost attach bracket that attaches the tank, the, the, the wing part of the tank to the fuselage and also has a bearing for aileron actuation in it. And just based on where there was blue color and, and you know, seeing some evidence, it seemed most likely that's where it was. Um, I did not originally pressure test the tank uh, to, to prove that's where the leak was, uh, which is, I should have done, but did not do. Then you have to open the tank. And so you use a some kind of hole cutter or rotary saw or whatever to basically cut a hole, access hole in the back of the tank. In this case, it's a five inch hole. And uh, looked in there and used a flashlight and immediately did not exactly see evidence of any leak on the inside of the tank. Usually it's pretty evident. Uh, usually there's a lack of pro seal or you know, something else sh kind of showing. But in the area where the tank leak was, everything looked really good. There was plenty of sealant everywhere and just didn't seem like that might be where the leak was coming from. And so not wanting to just assume, went ahead and then came up with a method of adding air to the tank to actually try and find the leak. That was a little difficult now that I just cut a five inch hole into the back of the tank. Um, so I had to get creative with like closing that back off temporarily uh, using a lot of weight and pressure, but use the balloon method, which is a common method for adding some air pressure onto the tank and then use some soap bubbles. Basically ended up finding the leak uh, on the opposite side of the tank attach bracket from where I thought it was, uh, on the forwardmost side of the plane instead of on the rear side. And so with that, uh, that was good because it was in a different spot than I had thought. It also is not in an area that's very easy to see when looking inside the back of the tank because it's actually around the back side of a piece of metal uh, that you can't see. So you actually have to use a mirror and a flashlight to try and see it. Didn't get the best view, but um, you know, with the mirror, but just assuming that that's where the air bubbles are coming from, felt pretty confident that that's where the leak was. Um, and so then began the process of, okay, now we have to seal the leak. So that process is mixing up Pro Seal, which is nasty stuff. Uh, you know, in enough quantity to do the work. You use a scotch bright pad to scotch bright the metal uh, on the tank where it is you're going to do the attaching. Uh, Pro Seal will go over existing Pro Seal just fine, but it will not stick to the, the nice alclad metal. It needs a rough surface. So you scotch bright, um, you know, around the area where you want to have some extra coverage so the Pro Seal has something to really hold on to in there. And then you also look for any other spots where you think, okay, just, just in passing, does it look like I should add some additional Pro Seal here? just because it doesn't look good enough and I don't want to have to open this thing back up again if this other area is leaking. So, you know, added a little bit of additional proceed on a couple other spots just to be on the safe side so it didn't have to open that uh, tank back up again. So set that pro seal and then you let the tank set for a couple of days so that can cure. So a couple of days later you come back and the pro seal is cured and you proceed then to want to test your work. And so again, we'll put some pressure on the tank uh, we'll cover the hole up and we'll use the balloon method and soap bubble method again and this time no evidence of any air coming out in the spot where it was before or any of the other spots I was suspect of. So I felt pretty good that we got that covered up. Um, and so then the next step is sealing up the hole that you cut in the back of the tank in much the same way. You cut a piece of metal larger than the one that you cut out with the hole and you line it up and you drill some holes for rivets and you pop rivet the thing on with Pro Seal, which also here's some footage of showing you how to do that. You have to scuff up all the surfaces. Uh, and then you let that set for a couple of days so that pro seal can cure.
and come back a couple days later and do the pressure test again to make sure that your, your hole that you just sealed up doesn't have any leaks. And in this case, felt pretty good about that. And so uh, felt really good about the tank actually being fixed. And now, we did consider, at this point, adding some fuel to the tank and trying to see if we could recreate the leak before we put the thing back on. But the geometry of where the leak was and how we'd have to align the tank to do that just didn't really allow for us to, to set the tank up in such a way that we could actually get any fuel in there in any, any way to actually do any real testing. So. And then getting the fuel back out becomes an issue. Yeah. So it is almost easier to put the tank back on yeah. and fill it back up than trying to fig finagle a way to test. So we put the tank back on and uh, that process took what, about two hours? Maybe an hour and a half, something like that. Yeah, yeah it, it, it went on pretty quickly. We've gotten pretty good at, at removal. Installation's yeah. a little quicker if you're kind of on the ball and know what you're doing. So, um, put the tank back on, got everything hooked back up, everything in reverse order, uh, what you do before. We add fuel mm -hmm. back in. We put 20 gallons of fuel back in. We've let it sit, and no evidence of any leak. So yeah. I feel pretty confident that yeah, we checked um, was, was up. a couple of different times, and uh, Caleb's gonna go fly tomorrow and see if we can slosh the fuel around and see what we see but it's been sitting no, definitely no glue we've checked we've been up there a couple different times now since we've put fuel back in and we feel pretty good about it blue is not my favorite color blue is not the favorite color